Hello, welcome to the Peak District. This is the incredible Thor's Cave that you can see behind me that we're going to be visiting later on in the video. But for now, we're starting off with Castleton. Enjoy! We begin today in the village of Castleton, which is my personal favourite village in the entirety of the Peak District. It is a gorgeous village with not only an epic castle, but also three famous caves that you can explore as well. And quickly before we begin, I said it in my last video, but I'm going to say it again in this video. I have very recently hit 1,000 subscribers, so I just want to give a massive thank you to every single person who has subscribed. It really means a lot. And if you're watching and you enjoy and you haven't subscribed, then what should they do? Subscribe to Alex Subscribe. <laughs> you always say the same line. But for now, let's begin the video and let's explore Peveril Castle. So we are walking up to Peveril Castle now. We've just taken a little rest stop because there is quite a hill. Uh, Elliot will account for this. There is quite a hill to get up to this castle. We it's not too bad. I can see the wall of the castle. <laughs> Why dying. are you laughing? You've been dying. <laughs> well, it's quite stiff. It's just a small hill. But yes, Peveril Castle is one of the earliest Norman fortresses built in England. It was built in 1176 by Henry II. And this castle is placed directly above the Peak Cavern, which is one of the three famous caves in Castleton. This cave is also known as the Devil's Arse, which is a great cave nickname, I know. And the Peak Cavern is the cave that we visited the last time we came here. So here is some potato quality footage from inside. But you get an idea of how incredible and grand this cavern is nonetheless. Here is a reconstruction of how this castle would have looked in 1250. It was never really a military castle, but more so a castle used to govern over the Forest of the Peak, as the owner of the Forest of the Peak was William Peveril, hence this castle's name. Need to sit down now, huh? Breast. It's actually really nice to be here in an incredible sunny day like today because last time we came, Ellie can vouch for this, it was it terrible. Was, oh, it was raining and <laughs> Raining, windy, and we tried to stand up by the keep, you'd barely even stand there. The mountain that you can see just over there is Mam Tor and you probably can't see on the camera but there are some remains of an old Iron Age hill fort up there. So it shows that this area was home to several attempts to settle here. Um, and it's probably due to the incredible landscape. Hey Ellie, there's a five-star toilet over here. And for the final and main part of this castle is the keep. Now, this keep is a relatively small keep, meaning therefore it wouldn't have held out very long under siege. But what it is, is an incredible lookout tower. You can see from miles all around from this point right here. So this keep would have only consisted of two rooms. A very small keep, as you can see, a main chamber would have been on this level and then a basement just down there. And that's it, whole keep. It's like a tiny house, isn't it, Lily? Well, it's a bit bigger than a tiny house. A tiny house would have been just this. It would be like a mansion for tiny house people. <laughs> Okay, so that sums up our trip to Peveril Castle. There's also a really nice museum to learn even more about the castle on your visit. And that also sums up our visit to Castleton. And now we are on to possibly the most iconic, picturesque image in the whole Peak District, the view from Bamford Edge. So here we are, hiking up Bamford Edge right now. The sun's come back out just in time for us to get hot and sweaty on the hike up. <laughs> Good job. 
bodes well. But yeah, I think if anyone thinks of a view in the Lake District, there's not a more iconic one than the view from Bamford Edge looking over Lady Bower Reservoir. So that's what we're gonna hike up to see. And here's that view now. So you can park at the nearby road, which you might be able to see off in the distance down there to hike to Bamford Edge, and it's probably about a one mile hike. Slightly uphill, but relatively easy terrain, which makes it a really great option for everyone who wants to see some incredible views, but maybe doesn't want to hike up a massive mountain. So this is one epic view of Bamford Edge, right there. You can stand there if you want. I did. Scary a bit. But yeah, there's just amazing views from up here. It's too bad there's no sunset, that would top it off. This is a very popular place to come in the evening to catch a sunset here. But stick around to the end of the video and we shall hopefully find a sunset at a place called Parkhouse Hill, which I'm also going to suggest. So this is quite a short walk. It's only actually a two mile round trip and that is if you want to walk all the way to the edge of Bamford Edge. Uh, if you want to make it shorter, you can still see some incredible views. But if Bamford Edge isn't Thor filled or cave filled enough for you, the next place we're heading to is going to be just for you because we have a three and a half mile round trip to Thor's cave. So here we are on our 3.5 mile circular hike going to Thor's Cave via the Manifold Way from the town of Wetton, which I would really suggest you. It's an incredible hike, a few steep climbs, but still nice and easy and a nice alternative uh, or something to do as well as Bamford Edge, like we're doing, because no hikes are enough. So there is evidence of people inhabiting Thor's Cave going way back to the Paleolithic period which is probably why the rocks were all so slippery and so worn inside which Ellie again can vouch for as here's this footage of show her sliding down on her butt. No. I don't think my shoes are that bad. But yeah, so this hike is slightly longer than Bamford Edge but still a relatively easy hike. Oh my gosh, it's a wild Ellie in Thor's cave. Yes, because he's my favourite Avenger. <laughs> So we've now walked down from Falls Cave. There it is up there. We're now following the River Manifold, which it's not really a river at the moment. It's all dried up uh, in the summer. So it's kind of, the walk is very easy. That's a, a good point of it, because usually the walk down here would probably be quite wet. But in fact, going back to the history of Thor's Cave, there is evidence that Thor's Cave is used as a Bronze Age burial site. And in terms of the name, Thor's Cave, some people think that it was named after the famous God of Thunder, and others think that Thor's Cave the Thor probably comes from the word Tor, meaning sort of mountain, such as Mam Tor, which is what it's located on. So take your pick. I think I prefer the God of Thunder one, being a Marvel fan. But yes, that is Thor's Cave. Let's continue our hike and uh, see what else we see on this gorgeous route. So the circular walk to Thor's Cave uses a path called the Manifold Way. Uh, and these named paths are all over the Peak District and are very helpful because they sort of help us to not get lost, which is good because we have a tendency to get lost a lot. We almost managed to get lost on this hike just now. A bit. A little bit. <laughs> but now it is time to head to our final location of the video, which is a couple of relatively small, but nonetheless extremely distinctive looking hills, which are the hills of Parkhouse Hill and Chrome Hill. And hopefully we can catch a sunset there. So let's go.
So here we are right now climbing up Chrome Hill. That hill that you can see behind me there is Park House Hill and either hill is a great option, especially on an awesome evening with a sunset like that. Like today to enjoy the sunset and see what we see. So I also found a couple of really great facts about both of these hills that I can entertain you with during our hike up. Firstly, Park House Hill, which is the one behind me, is the remains of a reef knoll during the Carboniferous period when the Peak District was completely covered by sea. And the second fact, which is my favourite, is that Park House Hill is a very unique place in the world because at certain times of year you can actually see what's called a double sunset here. You can only see it at late March, early April or in September and you can see it from the nearby Glutton Grange and that is definitely something to research into because it is very interesting. We are just a couple of months late to see it or three months early, whichever way you want to see it but one sunset is good enough for me. Good enough for you Ellie? Yes. There we go. <laughs> So yes, have the sunset behind us. Thank you very much for watching uh, this video. This sums up the end of our Peak District videos. In the next video, we are now heading up to York and then after that, we are heading up to Northumberland. So make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for those. And if you haven't already, feel free to check out my previous Peak District video in which we hiked up Kinder Scout. We did some cycling and kayaking all over the Peak District. So I'll leave a link in the description for that one. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.